Well, greetings to you. Uh, something a little different today. This uh, video is sponsored by my dear wife. She bought me this beautiful Aran knit sweater uh, to keep me warm on cold Mississippi nights and uh, gave it to me as an early Christmas present. I want to tell you the story today about Henry or Heinrich Suso. Heinrich Suso was born 1295 and uh, died in 1366. He was the most popular vernacular writer of the 14th century. And um, I don't know if you're familiar with this book, but this uh, was uh, published, we published it about uh, 20 odd years ago, Living Above the Average by William MacDonald. And uh, in this book, there are short stories that really encourage you to uh, seek the things that are above. And uh, there's one chapter called A Friend of God. And uh, I'm just going to read it. It's just a couple of pages long. It begins by saying, Henry Suso was a German mystic who lived in the 1300s. He, Paul Terstegen, and a few other devout believers were known as the Friends of God. And you can find a book, by the way, published called The Three Friends of God by uh, Francis Bevan. Uh, he goes on to say, they were men who dwelt in the secret place of the Most High. They were like the blessed man of Psalm 1, whose delight was in the law of the Lord, and in his law they meditated day and night. Their citizenship was in heaven, the holiness of their lives was proverbial. One day there was a knock at Suso's door. When he opened it, a woman whom he had never seen before stood there with a baby in her arms. Without warning, she shoved the baby into his arms, saying, Here, you have the fruit of your sin, and walked off. Suso was dazed. Her unfounded charge hit him like a bolt of lightning. He stood there with the tiny infant in his arms. No doubt the child was the fruit of her sin, but it wasn't his. Today she might have put the baby in a plastic bag and deposited it in a dumpster. But to her it was more important to put the blame on someone else. News of the incident quickly spread throughout the town, exposing Suso to the charge of being a religious fraud. But he was neither a hypocrite nor a fraud. All he could do was retreat and cry to the Lord. What shall I do, Lord? You know I'm innocent. The answer came back to him clearly and plainly. Do as I did. Suffer for the sins of others and say nothing. Suso got a fresh view of the cross and peace came to his soul. He raised the baby as if it were his own, never once defending himself against the charge. Years later, the sinful woman returned to the town and told the people that Suso was innocent, that her accusation against him was false. The harm was done, but God turned it out for good. Suso had become even more conformed to the image of Christ. He had won the victory. We read in the Old Testament that Joseph experienced the heartache and injustice of being falsely accused. The seductress charged him with attempted rape, even producing his coat as proof of his supposed sin. Yet he committed his case to the Lord, depending on him for vindication. The Lord Jesus was falsely accused. His enemies insisted he was born out of wedlock. They maintained that he performed his miracles by the power of Satan. They charged him with subverting the Roman government. Yet he was able to say in the most difficult times, Even so, Father, for it so it seemed good in your sight. We learn from his example that we don't need to justify ourselves or resort to legal relief. God allows sin to work itself out, exposing the accuser and honoring the victim. Now, I have an old volume in my library called The Hymns of Terstegen, Suso, and Others by Francis Bevan. 
And uh, I'm just going to read to you one poem. It's called The Finding. Now have I seen thee and found thee, for thou hast found thy sheep. I fled, but thy love would follow. I strayed, but thy grace would keep. Thou hast granted my heart's desire. Most blessed of the blessed is he who finds no rest and no sweetness till he rests, O Lord, in thee. In the wide world, speechless and lonely, for me is no heart like thine. Lord, since I must love thee only, O reveal that heart to mine. Would you know my glory, beloved? Know me, the great I am? First must your eyes behold me, the slain, and the stricken lamb. My visage so marred more than any, my form than the sons of men, yet to the heart I have won me, I am the fairest then. You know the sun by his glory, you know the rose by her breath, you know the fire by its glowing, you know my love by my death. Would you know in my great creation, where the rays of my glory meet, where to my awesome righteousness the kiss of my peace is sweet, where shine forth the wisdom and wonder of God's everlasting plan? Behold, on the cross of dishonor, a cursed and a dying man. You know, people say time will tell, but it's really eternity that will tell. And how we thank God for those who have borne with false accusations and have committed it to the Lord. And in the end, God vindicates his people. <laughs>